This is our first video on this subject based on Afzal Tahir's essay published in the United Kashmir Journal to rebuttal the official position of the government of India. Keep denying the people of the state of Jammu and Kashmir since 1947. The people of the divided state of Jammu and Kashmir become sandwiched between India and Pakistan because of their colonial approach from 1947 till to date and the policy of the both countries to keep producing extremist ideologies and politics of violence so to hide behind it from the world. This video would be the first in this regard to shed lights on the contradiction of India and Pakistan over to Jammu and Kashmir. The Kashmir question is projected in official discourses or officially sponsored discourses, certainly influenced public opinion and mindsets both at home and abroad. The images being built as the source of conflict dragging two modern states into confrontation and conflict, out of all proportions. The bilateral image building of the conflict had been in practice for last 74 years. Do not offer us any other explanation except that it was to confuse the thousands of years of Kashmir's political history, so to neutralize the question of self-determination under the cover of interstate rivalry. The work of scholars, writers, and journalists, too, failed to escape the subject bilateral image of the conflict and so is the case with the state and non-state actors while contributing in the processes of conflict resolution. The strategic writers like Aisha Jalal concluded it, a glittering prize, a tantalizing dream, a festering sore, Kashmir is the fairy tale that tortures the South Asian psyche. Certainly, the dominant factor was and is, a glittering prize while dominating strategy had been influenced by a tantalizing dream among the Siamese twins. One might take Aisha's argument in line with school of thought who see third world conflicts as endogenous and not exogenous in origin where the threat to national security come either from ethnic strife or weak legitimacy of ruling elites, or those who consider the distorted decolonizing process in the Indian subcontinent, the incompatibility of different ethnic identities and economic backwardness etc. There is no disagreement on these lines of argument, but one cannot ignore the third world's mindset, especially the ruling elites, partly the continuity of their colonial behavior, and partly maybe their training and skill they have had, while serving part of empire's administration. There are still a dominating class of bureaucratic intellectuals who think that the colonial tools are still an available answer to the post-colonial questions. The history of elements of fear of the variation of multi-denominations in a society had been used as a political weapon to deny or divert the public opinion, is a case in point. The concept of democracy, for the people, by the people, of the people, or the people's relation to land, recognizing their history and culture, had never been translated into public opinion and never adopted as a policy, and, never practiced by the bureaucratic machines of newly decolonized states of the third world. The urges of the people's right to self-determination, never allowed of its natural exit through democratic norms of dispensations. The socio-political, socio-economic and socio-cultural demands dealt with patriarch, tribal and feudal responses on behalf of the state that is by all standards, is an antithesis to a culture where rule of law prevailed and differences and demands settled through dialogue, arbitration, judicial process and finally through the process of vote, an only alternative course available to the politics of violence and anarchy. Therefore, the history of an armed insurgency and violent resistance in third world, always been and is a natural outcome of the state's backward responses aggravating the social fabric of society, further into turmoil and turbulence resulting in human catastrophe, stagnation in socio-economic, socio-cultural and socio-political life of a society in time and space. This might partly explain one of the reasons of the poverty especially in subcontinent and generally in third world. The historical setting of the Kashmir policy being persuaded by both the states, India and Pakistan, 
for last 74 years and the responses and approaches by the resistance movement. To identify and understand the fault line and to judge whether the bilateral approach we had seen for last 74 years would have any result-oriented credibility that could pave the way to enable the people of the divided state of Jammu and Kashmir to decide their future, democratically which would also helpful in reducing the hardship of the people of the entire Indian subcontinent. The fact that there is an element of suspicious in the people's mind, is the result of the historical experience from the rigid and barren mindsets of the bureaucratic machines of both the states, India, and Pakistan, which in my opinion, still lack any fresh air of creative thoughts toward the modern state system that is necessary in the contribution of the process of conflict resolutions, still no signs of sanity. There had been and still are clear legal and political guidelines, available regarding to the resolution of the Jammu and Kashmir question, but, both the governments even after 74 years are still lingering on, and not ready to address the issue, unfortunately going backward in its framework that was agreed and set out by both. Further hopelessness stems from the fact that while considering the stated positions of both the governments, no fresh ideas on table, and the historical rigidity under the influence of colonial lust is still prevail, dominated by patriarch, tribal, feudal, and colonial mindsets rather democratic norms of behavior. Let us to see the question whether bilateral approach had been in practice for last 74 years yet failed to reach any solution to the satisfaction of the people of Jammu and Kashmir particularly and people of India and Pakistan. The question is rest with the people of Jammu and Kashmir but in any dialogue process, they are not on the table. Is it possible to have any positive outcome of a dialogue process if Arabs and Israel discuss the question of Palestine but Palestinian would not be on the table? Therefore, any result-oriented dialogue process between India and Pakistan would come from the people of the United Jammu and Kashmir, allowing them free movement in their own land, enable them to elect their own representatives and the elected representatives would formulate the future constitution of the state to the satisfaction of all diverse pools and push and relation with both India and Pakistan under the principle of sharing sovereignty as we do here in Europe. In our next video, we will discuss the policy adopted by the government of India from 1947 till today brought nothing positive to the people of Jammu and Kashmir, India and Pakistan but poverty, hate, extremists' ideologies, terrorism, wars, deaths and destruction.